Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and welcome back to our series, Breeding Fish for Profit. In today's video, we are going to look at some really cool options for some 40 gallon breeder fish tanks. Hope you enjoy it, appreciate you being here. Now before we get started, if you haven't seen the other videos in this series, I will put them in the description below, especially if you're looking for even more options for breeding fish in a 40 gallon. We've done the 10, the 20, the 29, and all of those fish can breed very well in a 40 gallon breeder. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at some fish that I think do really well in this size tank. We have eight of them in our fish room, six right behind me and two on the other side of the fish room. We love this size tank. Now let's go ahead and take a look at why. Now, one of the types of fish that we really like to breed in a 40 gallon are the Imbuna cichlids, but here you've gotta be really careful. One, you really wanna have the water parameters. And so we're gonna start out with some fish that like a little bit harder water and a little bit higher pH, but don't worry. As we go through this video, we will also do some fish that breed around neutral, maybe slightly less than neutral with a lower pH. Now the Imbuna cichlids can be good, but you really have to make sure you select Imbuna that are going to be easy to resell. So for instance, for us, at least in our area, some of the Imbuna that do pretty well are Pseudotrophius ACI. These are great fish. They've got a nice yellow tail and a really nice deep blue color. So they have really good color, but not only that, they have a really nice personality and they're not overly aggressive. The second fish that we really love to breed in a 40 gallon are Pseudotrophius solosi. It's another Imbuna, but what's so cool about this is you actually get two different colors in the same fish. The males, as you can see, they get this really cool blue color with the dark blue stripes. And the females, they get kind of an orange color. Now, we've done a lot of species profiles on the fish that we are highlighting in this video. If you want more information on how to breed the fish, I will put them in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. The other one we've already talked about, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it when we did the 29 video, and that is the Rusty Cichlid, another one that is not super aggressive, stays relatively small, and it can be a really good addition. Something that's done well for us as well, and that is the Red Zebra Cichlid, mostly because when you see them in person, they have a really nice deep orange, even from a very small size, and that tends to attract a lot of buyers. Again, what we wanna do with the Imbuna is we wanna pick fish that aren't super common, they stay on the smaller side and they're not aggressive for Imbuna. Where you're gonna run into problems if you try to breed them is breeding the more aggressive types like maybe the Arata Cichlid or the Kenii or the Bumblebee Cichlid. When you're doing that, you're really limiting yourself in terms of the types of people that are gonna buy those fish because they are a little bit more on the aggressive side even for Imbuna. If you wanted to switch gears a little bit and maybe try to breed some Peacock Cichlids, this is a tank where we're starting to get to a size where that might be possible, but we have to stay with the smaller peacocks. So for instance, we had some pretty good luck breeding Eureka Red Cichlids. This is a really pretty cichlid that gets kind of a nice orange color with a blue face, and people seem to like them quite a bit, at least in our area. The other one is maybe like the Capatochromis. They tend to stay a little bit on the smaller side. You have to, again, you have to be careful here because some of the larger peacocks or haps, which we'll talk about in later videos, they might be a little bit too, they might grow a little bit too large for a 40 gallon breeder and or be a little bit too aggressive for that kind of setup. But at least in terms of the peacocks, the Eureka Reds and the Capatochromis for the most part as a genus, they tend to do pretty well in that size tank. The big thing with the peacocks, once again, is you have to make sure you are selecting species that have a lot of color. The downside to the peacocks is you're gonna have to grow them out a little bit longer because people generally aren't going to buy silver or brown fish. And unfortunately for most peacocks, that's the way they start out until they get to right around two and a half to three inches. And then you start to see some of the more dominant males begin to color up. Once they do that, they're a lot easier to sell, but know that you're gonna to have to hang on to them for a little bit longer if you wanna get more money for them. The larger they get, the more you're gonna get. If you can get adult size peacocks to grow, now even at the swaps and the auctions, it's very common to see those fish go for 25 to $30 a piece if you've got a really nice looking adult male. Keep in mind the females for these fish aren't going to sell unless somebody is interested in creating a breeding group. So that's the other thing you have to deal with is what are you going to do with the brown or silver females when you're breeding peacocks? Are you going to get rid of them? Are you gonna add them to your stock and keep them as a larger breeding colony? But those fish can be very hard to sell. And again, that's another reason why when you're selling them very small and you can't differentiate between males and females, you're gonna to have to sell them for a lot less. 
The last fish I want to talk about in the harder water side, and that is Alto Lamprologus compressiceps. These are really cool fish. They look like predators, although they're not overly aggressive. They've got that very interesting body style. If you can get the ones that are a little bit rarer, those can go for a decent amount of money, especially if you have a local pet store that you're selling to or you can sell locally. Now these fish aren't gonna ship very well, so that is something you should consider whenever you're breeding fish, Lake Tanganyika fish in general, of which this fish is from, they're not gonna ship as well, but the compressor steps are really awesome. Certainly possible in a 40 gallon breeder. The downside is it's going to take a while if you buy them small to grow them to a size in which they will breed. And when you finally get them to breed, it's going to take a while to get them to a sellable size. The nice thing is because their body shape is so unusual, as soon as they start showing that shape, you should be able to sell them relatively quickly. All right, so what if you've got water that's closer to neutral or maybe slightly less than neutral and it's a little bit on the softer side? There are a couple fish that I highly recommend in that case. The first one being the electric blue acara. These are fantastic fish and they show color from a very young age and the colors can be absolutely striking. We've had a group of them in our 40 gallon breeder that we've since moved to our 125 and they look absolutely amazing. And for us, it's been relatively easy to sell those fish at swaps and auctions and certainly in classifieds, you could definitely sell them. They tend to go pretty fast at local fish stores as well. They're just a really awesome fish. And the cool thing is they're not overly aggressive even though they are a cichlid. And so because of that, they're a little bit easier to move. The other one that you could consider is we could begin to look at the geophagus. Now we're gonna stay on the smaller side of the geophagus genus, at least in a 40 gallon breeder. And I think the one that would fit best is geophagus tapajos, the redhead tapajos. This is a fantastic fish. By the way, we've done species profiles on them and the electric blue acara all in the description below. But these geophagus are great. We have a group of them in a 55, but in a 40 gallon breeder, if you had a pair, a male and a female, and they started having fry, that would be a very good tank for them to be able to raise their fry, and then you can move them out to grow out tanks later on. But these fish definitely move well for us when they breed. We've bred them a number of times. They go very, very quickly at our swaps and auctions. They do well at local fish stores, provided that you grow them to a decent size. This is another fish where you're gonna have to hang on to them a little bit. They don't grow particularly fast. And most geophagus, when you breed them, they don't show a lot of color when they're small, but right when they get to around that three inch mark, they are going to start showing some color. That's when you can bring them to a local fish store, start taking pictures of them if you wanna sell them online in the classifieds. And they usually, like I said, they usually go pretty fast. It's a very good option for us. Now, again, if you're looking for options that are not cichlids, check out the 10, the 20, and the 29. We offer a lot of non-cichlid options there in case maybe cichlids aren't your thing. If you want more information on how to breed geophagus tapos, check out this video in the upper right-hand corner. If you want a little bit more information on the electric blue acara, this video in the lower right-hand corner will give you everything you need. The description's got the species profiles for pretty much all the other fish that we mentioned. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.